Well, good morning, friends, uh, Hope City Church family. So here we are beginning our 21-day uh, uh, fast devotion. So the fast actually began yesterday, um, but we, today is the first day of our devotion. So day two of our fast. So uh, if, if you did not know we were jumping into a 21-day fast, it's all right. Just jump in today and uh, you can catch into what God's doing. So, you know, it's so good to do these devotions together, to come together in the mornings like this. Um, you know, we've done this in the past where we've uh, done devotions together. And you know what I love about that is, is sometimes, especially on a Monday, I didn't get everything out on a Sunday morning in what we, uh, what I felt like God wanted to share during the sermon. And uh, so we get to just come back together uh, on Monday and kind of recap and I can expound a little bit more. I do need to give you a heads up. My daughter Loretta is in the room with me this morning, so she may or may not decide to make an appearance, uh, but if she does, uh, that'll be great. But all right, so 21 days with Jesus. So we have decided to right here at the beginning of the year uh, to just take 21 days set aside. I know you're saying, well, you know, we're already on the, the 8th. Why, why didn't we start January 1st? Well, first, I like to kick stuff off on a Sunday. I feel like it's there's something significant about when we start as a church family together on a Sunday morning and as a church family together on a Sunday morning. So that's what we're, we're going to do. We're going to start as a Sunday morning uh, family and then end on the 21st together. So... Uh, so yesterday we talked in church about the desirable thing. And what we looked at is we looked at the life of Daniel. And we looked how Daniel was feeling the weight of his family, feeling the weight of uh, his, his nation, you know, just kind of having all of that stuff come on him, come at him. And he needed an answer from heaven. He needed to hear from God. He needed to have God intervene on his behalf. So your Bible says that Daniel decided that he was going to take 21 days and that he was going to abstain from uh, any sweet breads or anything like that. But it actually says he, he decided to not eat any desirable thing. So he pushed the plate back. He pretty much became a vegetarian for 21 days. He pushed his plate back, didn't eat any desirable thing. And what we looked at yesterday that I think was just, I keep thinking about it, I, it keeps hitting home with me is at the conclusion of the, the 21 days, an angel appears to Daniel and says, hey, Daniel, God heard your prayer when you first started praying. There wasn't a delay in God's response. There wasn't a delay in uh, what God wanted to do. He heard your prayer when you prayed 21 days ago, but the Prince of Persia has been holding up your prayer. So he said, listen, there was warfare going on in the heavenlies, but you uh, persisted in your prayer. You persisted in your fasting. And as a result, God sent uh, Michael, the other archangel, to come and war on your behalf and to bring release the answer. And I love that because I think sometimes it's so significant that we believe that God's holding out on us. We believe that, uh, you know, we prayed, God didn't hear, he's not answering. But the Bible says he always hears, he always answers. He's either said yes, no, or not right now. And sometimes we don't like those answers, but he always hears and answers. But in Daniel's story, he says, listen, God heard, but there's been spiritual warfare that's been holding up your answer from coming. I know it's pretty early in the morning and I'm preaching pretty good already, so I'll slow it down a little bit, but he said, your answer's already coming. There was just warfare in the heavenlies, but when you kept praying and you kept fasting, it caused something significant to happen in the supernatural realm. So before anything manifests in the natural realm, we know it first exists in the supernatural realm. So when it wasn't showing up in the natural, there was warfare happening in the supernatural, Daniel, and you kept praying and you kept fasting and you kept believing. And as a result, God released Michael, the archangel, to help in this warfare and release your answer. So it's pretty significant to think about what we do in the natural has power and implications to what's going on in the supernatural realm. We talked about that yesterday, that a physical act of obedience can release what God wants to do in your life. A physical act of obedience can change what is happening in the supernatural. Wow, maybe it's not that God 
didn't hear or he didn't respond or he doesn't care or he's not listening. Maybe God's saying, hey, I need you to put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. I need a physical act of obedience on your part to release, to bring into the natural what's been held up in the supernatural. Wow, that's really significant. So that's a part of this 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's, it's when we're saying, God, I'm going to push away the desirable. Now, just from the top here, let me say uh, fasting for everybody might look very different. And uh, we're not telling everyone to go on 21 days without eating, obviously. Um, but what we're saying is get with God and see, you know, what is it that you would have me give up? Is it one meal a day that I'm to push away? Or is it a dessert that you eat all the time or uh, a drink that, you know, has really have a grip on you? Come on, any, any soda, Coca-Cola drinkers out there. Uh, but whatever that looks like and whatever he speaks to you and, and uh, you know, we just say lean into what God speaks to you. I do believe that in this season, other times we have said, hey, let's give up social media or, you know, if, turn off the television for 21 days. But I really feel, felt impressed this year that it was to be something food related. So that's what we're saying is for 21 days, get with God, find out what it is that he wants you to give up and fast during these 21 days. And we believe that as we take a physical act of obedience, a physical step of obedience towards God, it will release what's being held up in the spirit. So uh, again, Get with God and, and find out what it is that he would have you do. Obviously, if you have medical conditions and talk to your doctor about all of those things as well. So here's Daniel. He says, I need breakthrough. I need an answer. I can't have another tomorrow like I had yesterday. My people are, are oppressed. My family's oppressed. The world's caving in around me. I need breakthrough. Come on, anybody else in the house this morning that needs breakthrough? So Daniel said, I need breakthrough in my life. I need breakthrough in my world. So... I'm going to abstain from the desirable thing for 21 days, and I'm going to just believe that God's going to do something significant. And that's what I love about starting this fast right here at the beginning of 2024, because I feel like for me, I need something different in this new year than I had in the last year. I, I have to have something new, something significant. I don't want to just go through the motions and have more of what I've had, but I want God to do something new and tangible and significant in my life and in my world. So... Get with God, find out what it is that he would have you give up during these, these 21 days. Um, you know, like as I've said before, David said, I won't give God what doesn't cost me something. So, you know, if you're not feeling it, <laughs> it's probably not fasting. So you want to make sure that what you're giving up is a sacrifice. Uh, so anyway, so just to recap a little bit on what we've been talking about with Daniel. Daniel says, all right, I'm going to abstain from the desirable food. And what I loved about the story that I brought out yesterday is that after the 21 days, the angel appears to Daniel and he says, listen, Daniel, God heard, he answered, there's been warfare, Michael came, he, he brought war, and now the answer's coming. But what we discovered is what God said through the angel back to Daniel, he said, oh, Daniel, greatly beloved. And if you study that phrase out, it actually means desirable one. And I just can't, I just, all, even all last night, that phrase just kept ringing through my mind after we released that in, in, in church yesterday, that Daniel gave up what was desirable to him. And God spoke back to Daniel and said, Daniel, because you've given up what was desirable to you, you have become more desirable to me. Wow. And I think that's powerful and that's significant to just hear from God that, listen, you have become more desirable to me. To be like David, where he spoke to David and said, David, you are a man after my own heart. Now, we know God, the love of God is, is constant. The love of God is continuous. The love of God isn't contingent on whether we're fasting or not fasting. But I do believe that favor is different than the love of God. And, and you know, just like even, you know, how do I word this? But with, with your own kids, you know. The, the love I have for my kids is unwavering, it's steady, it's fixed. They can't do anything to make me lo love them. I will always continually love them. But there are days, come on parents, there are days where my favor towards them is very different. And some of it has to do with how they're acting. And on difficult days, I love you. 
I don't have a lot of favor towards you right now. And there are other days where by just an act of kindness or an act of uh, love back towards me, it's like, wow, you know what? I, I've always loved you, but today I have a little bit more favor towards you. And I believe that's the same way it is with God. It's like when we take a physical act of obedience, a physical act, and we push away that desirable thing, God says, man, you've become desirable to me. Even with David, David wasn't the only man that God loved in the Old Testament, the only person that he loved. No, he, he loved all of his children, but he looked at David and said, David, there's something that you're doing that has caused you to become a man after my own heart. So if prayer and fasting opens up this communication with God where God looks at Daniel and says, Daniel, you've become desirable. I've set my heart during this 21 days. I said, Lord, I need breakthrough in my life. I need breakthrough in our ministry. I need breakthrough, you know, and financially, I need breakthrough in a lot of areas. But if I get nothing else out of this fast, if I don't get significant financial breakthrough, if I don't get significant relational breakthrough, all of those things, let it be said that at the end of this, that I've just become more desirable to you. That I've just become more desirable to you. That you look at the sacrifice, that you look at the time that I've spent with you and you say, wow, wow, that's significant. I don't know, hopefully that's your prayer. It's obviously we believe God for breakthrough. We believe God and he will, he'll do those things. But sometimes it's just saying, Lord, I want to be more desirable to you, more desirable to you. So that's just a, a brief recap of yesterday. But what I wanted to bring kind of fresh as we, as we jump into these devotions together, is found in Matthew 17, uh, and let me see here, verse 17, Matthew 17, chapter 17, verse 17. And this is that great moment where Jesus talks about there are certain kinds that only come out through prayer and through fasting. But I'm going to jump to a verse before that and read a little bit of the context here. And here's what it says, verse 17, chapter 17. Uh, then Jesus answered, so this is Jesus speaking, O faith, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Uh, bring him here to me. So the context of what is happening is there is a boy who was demon possessed and was throwing himself into the fire and into the water. And the disciples had watched Jesus's earthly ministry. They watched, you know, him heal blinded eyes. They watched him cast demons out of people. They watched him raise the dead. They watched him do all these significant things. And this was their moment. They wanted to step up and step out and, and show that they could flow in that as well. And they brought the demon possessed boy to the disciples and the disciples couldn't do anything with him. So they bring him to Jesus and they, and they ask Jesus, well, why isn't this working for us? And Jesus' response to his disciples, remember this, his disciples is, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked the de demon and he came out of him and the child was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast him out? Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For truly, I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind does not come out except by prayer and by fasting. So I want to address that for a minute because this is Jesus, again, he's speaking to his disciples, the ones that he has mentored and has trained and they have watched him and they were with him and they witnessed all these things. And when they're questioning why they're struggling, he looks at them and he says, oh, you perverse generation. Wow. So I looked up that a little bit and began to study that and said, God, why would you call your disciples a perverse generation? generation. He goes on to talk about faith and having faith as a mustard seed, which isn't even a lot of faith. It doesn't take a lot of faith to move a mountain. But he talks about this perverse generation. And he's, and pretty much what he's saying is if you, you, you boil this whole thing down, he says, if you have unbelief in your heart, it is simply because you have disconnected from God. And that's what I want to bring to us today. If you have unbelief in your heart, it's simply because you have disconnected from God. You've disconnected from God and you connected 
in some way to the world. In God, we know there's no impossibility. We know there's nothing too difficult for him. And if somehow in the process we've, we've lost contact with that uh, aspect that there's nothing impossible for God, it's simply because we have disconnected from him and somehow have connected f- to the world. Some of the ways that we disconnect are very tangible. Uh, you know, sometimes disconnecting from God, is it that, you know, oh, now there's this you know, you wake up one day and there's this great divide between you and God. That's not how it happens. It, it, it happens because we've disconnected from praise. We've disconnected from our worship. We've uh, disconnected from reading the word of God and opening up this book and hearing what it says. You know, there was a study that was recently done, and I don't have all the numbers in front of me, but that talked about people who read the Bible for just short periods a day are far less likely to have depression, have anxiety, struggle with pornography, um, deal with anger. Like it, and that's just from reading the word of God. We know that as believers, that the word of God is sharper than a two edged sword. You get this thing in you. David said, I've hidden your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you. There's a correlation to being in this book and having it have a, a spiritual supernatural impact. You might say, well, I, listen, I've tried to read the Bible, Pastor, and I don't understand it. Just keep reading. Just get into it and keep reading. The Holy Spirit enlightens the word to us. I know that sounds simplistic, but listen, there's something that happens. And again, just what we talked about, Daniel took a physical step and God released something supernatural, supernaturally into his world. Sometimes just taking that physical step that says, God, I don't, I don't even understand all of what I'm reading. I don't want to read it. I'm not a reader. This is too much for me. But just spending that time in his word is that physical action, that physical step that you release before God and said, I'm going to read this word. And I, for me in my life, There have been situations and circumstances where something's happened and suddenly a verse of scripture pops up into my spirit. And I'm like, I don't even know where that is. And I've had to check. Listen, I've been pastoring for almost 20 years. And I'm like, I I have to check. Is that even in the Bible? And lo and behold, and I don't know if I heard it somewhere else, if it came from reading. But the fact of the matter is, I didn't even know it was in my heart. It was just in my heart. And suddenly at the right time, at the right moment when I needed it the most, It was there. That's happened so many times praying for people. And, you know, just a word, a scripture comes up into my heart. And it's just like, I haven't read it recently. It's just in there. And that's what happens when we're faithful to connecting to God. Faithful in our worship. Faithful in, in reading the word of God. Faithful in prayer. You can never get around being faithful in prayer. That's that communication. And I want to challenge you during this 21 days, you know, there's the part of prayer that, yes, we approach God and we say, all right, you know, uh, you know, Lord, I love you. Forgive me for my sins. Here's what I'm believing for. Help my family, help this situation, help that person. But then sometimes there's this principle of just sitting before God quietly in prayer and saying, all right, I got, I got all that I needed to say. You know, one of the things that make a powerful friendship is when there's a two-way dialogue. Sometimes, you know, if you're in a friendship or a relationship where the one person dominates the space and dominates the conversation, the other person, you know, hey, I know everything about you, but we're not really invested here equally. And sometimes when we come to God and we're just pouring all of our wants and our cares and our worries, and he wants to know all of that. He wants us to pour that out. It's a sign that we trust him. He already knows what's going on in our world, but it's that confession. It's, it's that making our, our decrees and our petitions known before God. There's power in that. But to sometimes stop at the end of that and say, all right, Lord, your turn. Your turn. And I often said, I, I will know my kids' voices. I'll know my wife's voice from across the room. Parents, you know the different screams of your kid. Like somebody can be at our house and our kids are screaming down the hallway. And are they okay? Oh, yeah, no, that's 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 not a hurt cry. That's that's a fight cry. And you just as parents, you instinctively know the tone and the voice and the, you know, the cry of your kids. Why? Because you're so attuned to them. You listen to them. You spend time with them. You hear it all day long. Right. And sometimes we struggle in hearing the voice of God. Not because he's not speaking, but simply because we haven't been quiet enough and silent enough. 
and taking the time to turn out all the other distractions, the television, social media, all of it off, and just sit quietly with God and say, all right, Lord, you speak, you talk, I'm listening. At first, it's going to feel weird, but you, you just might hear some phrases come up in your heart. You might hear a scripture come up into your heart, and that's God speaking. I challenge you to journal. Sometimes, you know, you have this thing where you hear something in here, but then in your mind is going up here of, did I hear that? Is that right? Is that me? Is that God speaking? What am I having for lunch? Hmm, I wonder what else I need to do today. That's right. I got to do. And you have this whole mind thing that's happening. Sometimes for me to sit and write what I'm hearing in here shuts my mind off to only focus writing what I'm hearing here. And to sometimes to sit back and read what I wrote is powerful because I believe that's what God's speaking to me. So here's what he says to his disciples. You couldn't do this thing because you're disconnected from God. There's a disconnect. Somewhere along the way, we've leaned and, and been drawn away from those times of worship and those intimate times of getting into this word and studying it out. And let me tell you something about the word. I would rather for somebody to take one verse out of this book and read that book, read that verse, get it into their heart, meditate on it, write it on cards, memorize that verse. No, chew on it, meditate on it. Then to say, yeah, well, I, I read through, you know, 20 chapters this, this morning and didn't retain, didn't really lean into it. It's much more powerful to say, you know what, I'm going to take this verse and I'm going to study it. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to pray over it. I'm going to just think about it. I'm going to rehearse it throughout the day. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to do whatever it is I have to do to memorize this verse, get it into my heart. So to reconnect to God, we, we worship, we we get into his word, we pray, but we don't make it one-sided prayer. Sometimes we just sit back and we just say, Lord, now your turn. Speak to me. The quietness, that's my daughter Loretta. In, in the quietness, in the stillness of this moment, Lord, just speak to me. You know, meditation has been stolen from the church and it's been used in the world as this, you know, type of connecting with the universe, but it's a Bible word. Meditating is a Bible word to sometimes to sit in the stillness and in the quiet and just say, Lord, speak to me. Let me just be in your presence for a moment. Those are the things that reconnect us back to God. So Jesus tells his disciples, listen, you're struggling because you've disconnected from me. Now's the time to re connect. Now's the time to get back into your worship, to get back into the word, to get back into prayer. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your spiritual gifting is, what your level is in the church. If you're a believer, there are seasons and, and times where we have drifted away because life's busy, right? We have jobs, we have families, we have all of that stuff. And there are seasons and times we drift away. And that's why 21 days of prayer and fasting is so important. Because it's that moment right at the beginning of the year, we're saying, Lord, forgive us for, for drifting, forgive us for walking away, forgive us for not intentionally walking away, but forgive us for these times where we have put other things first and we, even in our busyness and our, our devotions, you know, we quick read through the devotion, say the prayer at the end, and we put our God time in. But help me throughout the day, just take a minute, just take some moments to pray, to hear your voice, to worship you, to sit in the silence, to journal. All of those things are tools to help us reconnect to God. Sometimes get out in nature. Get out in nature. Go take a walk. I know it's cold out. I know we just had some snow, but go take a walk. Go go outside. Go in the woods. Wherever that place is for you. Know, I always laugh because for me, there's a road that I drive on. That's uh, We kind of live out in the country a little bit, and there's this road that even when I was a kid, it's a kind of a significant road, but uh, I remember as a kid, my mom parking the Thunderbird on the, or we had a uh, Ford Thunderbird, which I still have, but, uh, that we parked on the side of the road and we would just go walk in that road and pray. And, uh, on that road, we found my, uh, favorite dog. It was a black lab that we had. He was just happened to be sitting on the side of that road. He'd gotten lost. So we, we took him home and that was the dog that 
uh, I first remember having and, and grew up with. And that rose has always been very significant to me. And sometimes even now in the busyness and the chaos, and if I feel overwhelmed, it's like, I just need to get with God. And I feel God driving that road. I know it's strange and, and maybe crazy, but maybe you have a place like that. Maybe it's a prayer closet. Maybe it's in the front seat of your car. Maybe, you know, whatever that place is for you, it's significant. But those are places that I go and I feel God and I, it's just like the, the busyness and the chaos of the world just silences and goes away and I can connect with God. I don't know what space you have like that, but find one, get one, search it. So 21 days, we're going to push our plates back, push away the desirable thing and say, Lord, out of it all, we just want to be more desirable to you. We want to be desirable to you. We want to reconnect to you. We want to be like David. We want to be people, men and women who are after your heart. We just want to pursue you with everything that we have. And I know there are other things that we're in need of and believe in God for, but isn't that what he said? Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first me. Seek first my face. Not what's in my hand, but seek first my face and then I'll release what's in my hand. So that's what we want to do during these 21 days. So uh, we're going to come to you every day uh, during these 21 days with devotions, except Sunday mornings, because obviously we'll be in church and uh, doing devotions there together. I know many of you will be watching this broadcast later on. Um, but thanks for hanging out with me today and, and being on these these this time together and opening up the word of God. I'll be back with you tomorrow. And we have some other people coming on as well over the next few days to help uh, get us in the word and, and hear what God would say to us. But I just want to encourage you right here from the top today, just reconnect with God. That's what this thing is. It's not a, a weight loss, you know, group weight loss thing that we're trying to do. It's not, I always say, it's not a hunger strike against God that's saying, hey, I'm not going to eat until you do this for me. That's not what any of this is. This is about me. This is about what's going on in my heart and in my world. It's about me right at the top of 2024, which, you know, I mean, over the last few days, there's been so much already happening in the world and in the news and just, you know, it's an election year. It's going to be a chaotic year for the world. It doesn't have to be for me. It doesn't have to be for the church, but it won't be if I go into it with my eyes fixed on Jesus, connected to him. And that's what we want to do right here from the top is just refix our eyes, reconnect with him and just say, Lord, just, just right here from the top of this, this new year, speak to me. So, uh, thanks Loretta. Do you want to come say hi? You want to come? Maybe, maybe not. You've been really good. So as if you weren't watching from the beginning, I have my daughter Loretta uh, with me in the room. So she keeps saying she wants to say hi, but I don't think it's, it's going to happen today. But anyway, so it's so good to have been with you today. Uh, just take a few minutes if you can right now, if not later on today. But don't let the whole day go by before you get too busy where you just reconnect with God. Just spend some time with him. So thanks for being on the devotions. I'll see you again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. All right. Love you. Go with God.